The Middle East nation of Yemen is taking center stage in America's fight against terrorism. The Nigerian man accused of trying to bomb a jetliner says he was trained by a Yemen-based al-Qaeda group. Over the past month, the U.S. has launched airstrikes against suspected terrorist targets in Yemen. And over the weekend, the U.S. and Britain shut down their embassies in the Yemeni capital of Sana'a. They reopened yesterday after Yemen's military disrupted what's believed to be a plot to attack the embassies. And now there's word of a growing friction between Yemen's government and the U.S. amid the increased attention on the country. For more now, we're joined by CBS News Foreign Affairs Analyst Pamela Fock. Good morning. Good morning, Michelle. You spoke with the U.N. Ambassador of Yemen, and uh, he has some surprising things to say, including that this attack was not the work of al-Qaeda on the Arabian Peninsula, right? Yes, his basic view was that there is an al-Qaeda on the Arabian Peninsula. It does have some resources, and they obviously had something to do with training him. But the detail that was involved in this attack, the carrying the explosives, the bomb, the traveling to other countries, most likely, and more information will come out in the future is what he said, most likely had to do with the al-Qaeda central is what he called it. In other words, al-Qaeda in Pakistan and Afghanistan. The Qaeda are not dumb enough. They are vicious, they are violent, they are bad. But they are thinking, I doubt they will give him the weapons, the explosive, and tell him travel from one country to the other without being afraid he might be exposed. So, and so why does he believe that it's al-Qaeda central? His basic view was that the kind of uh, the elaborate planning had to have to do with other countries involved. In other words, he may have been uh, indoctrinated in other countries, but that basically his view was that that kind of travel, they wouldn't have risked his travel to several different countries uh, if it was only al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and that it did have bigger planning footprints on it is, is really what, they, what he believes, and he thinks intelligence intelligence is showing. We mentioned that there's this growing tension between the U.S. and Yemen. Um, what did he say as far as that and as far as military control? What he said was that the there is not friction between Yemen and the United States or Saudi Arabia and all the money that's flowing in and military uh, assistance uh, that uh, Saudi Arabia has provided two billion dollars, the United States 76 million and is looking for another 150 million dollars. All of that is welcome. The special operations are welcome. Um, the uh, intelligence is welcome. What is not is boots on the ground. And that was his basic bottom line, that this shouldn't turn into another Afghanistan, but that the cooperation is what will get rid of the terrorist threat in the country. They also have to deal with a north-south divide and a secessionist uh, part of the country. In other words, a separate civil war that's going on. Uh, Yemen has a good military. It needs... U.S. help in terms of weapons, uh, in terms of intelligence information, and in terms of training. I think Yemen will do an effective job of eliminating the Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. And so how could the intelligence sharing work with Yemen? Uh, what Ambassador Al Saidi said, and he's been in the foreign ministry since the 1980s in Yemen, is that they could have stopped Abdul Matala, uh, Umar Farouk Abdul Matala, the Christmas Day attempted bomber, because if the United States had shared the intelligence and said, in fact, he he was being trained, his father had the concerns, all of the information the United States had in a CIA, CIA um, document and dossier on him, that they could have arrested him, detained him, and they clearly would have. Had we known that he's in Yemen, and his father complained about him that he's been radicalized by Qaeda, or the U.S. told us, or the British told us, because he was, he, he lived in Britain, we would have observed his activities and detained him if we knew he was going to do something wrong. You also got a chance to talk to him about al-Qaeda and why it's grown in that area. Yes. What did he have to say about that? That was the most interesting. What he said was abject poverty. To fight terrorism is not only by security and military means, but by improving the lot of the people. 
He also said that what is really the fertile ground for the, the building of terrorism is the poverty. And if the international community can help where oil revenues have declined in Yemen, that would go a long way. Yeah, because they have nothing to lose at that point. Precisely. All right, Pam Falk, very interesting. Thank you so much. And the full interview is available. Just go to our website, cbsnews.com, and you can watch it there.